Hello everybody, today we are going to discuss about the line coding. But first, let us define what a line code is. A line code is the code used for data transmission of a digital signal over a transmission line. This process of coding is chosen so as to avoid the overlap and distortion of signal, such as inter-symbol interference. Now, what is line coding? The line coding is a process of converting digital data to digital signals. With this technique, we convert a sequence of bits to a digital signal. At the center side, the digital data are encoded into a digital signal. And at the receiver side, the digital data are recreated by decoding the digital signal. The question is, why line coding? Well, there are many reasons for using line coding. Each of the line codes that you will be examining offers one or more of the following advantages. First, is the spectrum shaping and relocation without modulation or filtering. This is important in telephone line applications. For example, where the transfer characteristics has time attenuation below 300 Hz. Second, big clock recovery can be simplified. Third, DC component can be eliminated. And this allows the AC capacitor or transformer coupling between stages as in telephone lines. Fourth, the error detection capabilities. Fifth, the bandwidth usage, the possibility of transmitting at a higher rate than the other schemes over same bandwidth. Now let us move on to the properties of line coding. First, as the coding is done to make more bits transmit on a single signal, the bandwidth used is much reduced. Second, for a given bandwidth, the power is efficiently used. Third, the power density is much favorable. Fourth, the timing content is adequate. And fifth, long strings of ones and zeros are avoided to maintain transparency. Types of line coding. There are three types of line coding. The unipolar, polar, and bipolar. The unipolar signaling. Unipolar signaling is also called as an on-off keying or simply OOK. The presence of pulse represents a one and the absence of pulse represents a zero. Now there are two variations of the unipolar signaling. The first one is the unipolar non-return to zero or NRZ and the second one is the unipolar return to zero or RZ. The unipolar non-return to zero. In this type of unipolar signaling, a high data is represented by a positive pulse called as mark, which has a duration of T sub zero equal to the symbol bit duration. A low in data input has no pulse. The advantages of unipolar NRZ are, first, it is simple, and second, a lesser bandwidth is required. However, the disadvantages are, no error correction done, the presence of low frequency components may cause signal droop, no clock is present, and the loss of synchronization is likely to occur. Next, we have the unipolar return to zero, or RZ. A high in data, though represented by a marked pulse, its duration T sub zero is less than the symbol bit duration. Half of the bit duration remains high, but it immediately returns to zero and shows the absence of pulse during the remaining half of the bit duration. The advantages of unipolar return to zero. First, it is also simple. Second, the spectral line present at the symbol rate can be used as a clock. And the disadvantages are, first, no error correction. Second, it occupies twice the bandwidth as unipolar NRZ. Third, the signal droop is caused at the places where signal is non-zero at zero hertz. Next, we have the polar signaling. Polar signaling also has two variations, the NRZ and the RZ. The polar NRZ. In this type of polar signaling, a high in data is represented by a positive pulse, while a low in data is represented by a negative pulse. The advantages of polar NRZ. First, it is simple. Second, no low frequency components are present. And the disadvantages are no error correction, no clock is present, and the signal loop is caused at the places where the signal is non-zero at zero hertz. The polar RZ. It is like the unipolar return to zero in the previous type of line coding. However, for a low input, a negative pulse represents a data and the zero level remains same for the other half of the bit duration. The advantages of polar RZ. First, it is simple. Second, no low frequency components are present. And the disadvantages are no error correction, no clock is present, it occupies twice the bandwidth of polar NRZ, 
Z and the signal loop is caused at places where the signal is non-zero at zero hertz. Lastly, we have the bipolar signaling. This is an encoding technique which has three voltage levels, namely positive, negative, and zero. Such a signal is called as dual binary signal. An example of this type is alternate mark inversion or AMI. For A1, the voltage level gets a transition from positive to negative or from negative to positive, having alternate ones to be of equal polarity. A0 will have a zero voltage level. And even in this method, we have two types, the bipolar NRZ and the bipolar RZ. The advantages of bipolar signaling. First, it is simple. Second, no low frequency components are present. Third, occupies low bandwidth than unipolar and polar NRZ skims. Fourth, this technique is suitable for transmission over AC coupled lines as signal grouping doesn't occur here. Fifth, a single error detection capability is present in this. And the disadvantages are no clock is present and long strings of data causes loss of synchronization. For us to fully understand this topic, let us have some examples. Here we have, using the ASCII table, the output of quantizer that will transmit to the digital antenna will be doing NAND, the binary value of symbol semicolon in J, trace the line encoding. Now, in our solution, we put here the NAND of the semicolon in the J, and thus we have, we get the F. And here is our data. 1101010101. Now, if we are going to write this in the unipolar NRZ, we have here the positive pulse. And then zero. Again, positive pulse. Zero, positive pulse. Zero, and then positive pulse again. This is the unipolar. Next, for the unipolar RZ, we have here the positive pulse, half bit, and then zero, and then positive pulse again, and then half bit zero, and then zero, and then positive pulse again, half bit, zero, zero, and then positive pulse again, half bit zero, and then positive pulse bit zero. This is the unipolar. R, Z. Now let us write the polar and RZ and RZ. For polar signaling, first we have to write here the V and then 0 and then negative V. Now we have here positive 1, 1 and then 0 it goes to negative and then 1 again for positive drops down again to negative for 0, and then up again for 1, 0, and 1. This is for the polar and RZ. For the polar RZ, we also have to write here the V, 0, and negative V. Here we have only half bit, and then back to 0, half bit again, and then back to 0, and then for zero, we are going to the negative. Half bit, back to zero. And then again, for positive, half bit, back to zero. For negative, for zero, rather, negative, and then half bit, back to zero. For positive, half bit, back to zero. Zero, negative, back to zero, and then positive, half bit, and then zero. This is for polar. And lastly, for the bipolar signaling, we also have to write here the V, and then 0, and then the negative V. Now here, we have to write the positive 1 for NRZ, and then it's going down to the negative for another 1, and then 0, and then it goes up again for positive 1, and then goes to 0, and then negative again, sorry, negative here, and then 0, and then it goes to positive. So this is the bipolar 
N R Z. Next is the bipolar R Z. Write again the V, zero, and the negative volt. Now we have here the half bit back to zero and then it goes to negative for another pulse, half bit, and then zero, and then half bit for one, and then zero, and then negative half bit for another one, zero, and then another half bit for positive one. This is the bipolar RZ. For our second example, we have here performing the line coding techniques on a decimal number 54. First, we have to convert the decimal number into binary. So we divide it into two, and then we have these remainders. So we have the final answer as the binary data of 11011 and 0. Here is the data. So first, let us write the unipolar and RZ. We have here this. Positive, positive, oops. positive, positive, and then zero, and then again positive, positive, and then zero. This is the unipolar and RZ. Second, the unipolar RZ. So first, positive and then half bit, and then positive again and then half bit, and then zero. And then positive half bit, zero, positive half bit, zero, and then zero. This is the unipolar RZ. Next is the polar and RZ. So we have here the V, zero, and negative V. So we write it as this, positive, positive, and then negative for zero. And then another positive and then negative. This is the polar and RZ. Next we have the polar RZ. V again and then zero and then negative V. We have here half bit and then goes back to zero. And then another half bit and then it goes back to zero. And then negative for zero. Sorry, half bit goes back to zero and then positive half bit and then goes to zero positive half bit goes to zero and then negative goes back to zero polar rz for the bipolar signaling we have here again the v zero and negative v and now this one is positive one, and then it goes to negative, and then zero, and then again positive, it goes up, and then for negative here, we have again zero. This is the bipolar and RZ. For the bipolar RC, we also have to write here the V0 and the negative V. So half bit for positive, and then goes back to zero. And then we have here another half bit, but for the negative, and then goes back to zero, and then zero again, and then positive half bit goes back to zero, and the negative half bit goes back to zero, and then zero. And that is for the bipolar. And that is our line coding topic. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something from it. And if you do, please give this video a thumbs up. Bye!